Hey guys, it's Kevin another movie for guys, and I was going to be reviewing this movie that I definitely was very interested in seeing. Out of all the movies coming out in January, uh, this was the one that I was looking forward to the most, and I wanted to make sure that this was the first movie that I saw in theaters in 2017, and I did, and that movie is none other than M. Night Shyamalan's next film, Splits. Guys, I was so hyped uh, for this movie for many reasons. One, because M. Night Shyamalan, as we know, hasn't been making that great of films, and he made The Visit, and I thought that was a really well-done comeback film from him. A lot of people didn't like that movie, but I thought it was a nice return. He did a good job in showing that he can still do it, and Split looked like it was going to be possibly even better than The Visit, and I was really looking forward to this movie definitely, and like I said, it was a movie I was most looking forward to in January, but I definitely had my doubts because it's a January movie, and that's not usually a good sign that it's, you know, pitted in the disposable month of garbage, basically, so I really didn't know how this movie was going to be, but thank God that I saw this movie in theaters because Splits is fucking amazing. I mean, M. Night is definitely back. Uh, everyone has said it, and I will definitely agree. He is definitely back with, I, in my opinion, his best film since either Signs or Unbreakable, really. This is definitely more of what M. Night Shyamalan should be making, and let's just get into this movie because I really do want to talk about it overall. Now, the plot to this movie uh, is very interesting. I really did think the plot here was very interesting because we focus on... James McAvoy plays this uh, character named Kevin. Now, Kevin is a character, but he's not exactly a character in this movie. He's more of the body that inhabits over 23 different personalities who, every single one, some are different gender, different age, uh, different personality. They're all different. There's really nothing similar about these personalities, and one of them ends up kidnapping three teenage girls for very unknown reasons. We don't really know why they're kidnapped or what's really going on there. But basically, through their kidnapping, we see that he's starting to develop a 24th personality called the Beast. And the real question is, is this actually happening? Or is this just something that he's telling his therapist, Betty Buckley, uh, and is he starting to go crazy, possibly? So that's basically a plot of Split overall. Um, but let's get into this movie starting off off with the cast because when it really comes down to it the thing I think that were, made this movie so great is the cast the cast here really did an incredible job and most notably out of everyone the best performance in this movie and this movie would not work if it wasn't for James McAvoy who holy shit was he good I mean what a task to uphold really I mean a lesser actor, this could have completely uh, crumbled, really. This could have been absolutely terrible if it would have been another actor, because what he has to do in this movie is nothing short of remarkable. I mean, it is incredible what he has to do here, because he'll have a scene where he starts acting like one character, and then it'll cut, and he'll start acting like another character. And the way that McAvoy completely puts himself into this role, basically channeling everything that he has, and, you know, between humor and thrilling and just, you know, um, tons of pathos and logos. I mean, there's so much put into every single one of these characters, and James McAvoy absolutely killed it in this role. Uh, he proves to be one of the best actors working today, and this is by far his best performance. He was absolutely fucking incredible in this movie, and like I said, this movie really is helmed by him, there's a lot of weight on his shoulders, but it really would fall apart if it wasn't for James McAvoy, because the entire movie is centered around him, as we know, and he really did an incredible job here, and definitely, especially for a January film, this is by far a career best performance for him, I love what he did in this film, and it could have really fallen apart if it would have been a lesser actor, but luckily McAvoy was definitely up to the task, and it definitely showed in the most admirable way possible. But just as noteworthy, in my opinion, is Anya Taylor-Joy, who I don't really think has got in a lot of recognition in this film. I've heard so much James McAvoy, James McAvoy, but Anya Taylor-Joy is a fantastic actress. I mean, I haven't seen her give a bad performance yet. I didn't watch Morgan, but I heard she was still good in that, and she's great in this movie. I really did love this character, Casey. Immediately when you're introduced to her, you know there's something off about her. You just see her. She's not like the rest of the characters. She's very reclusive. She's very to herself. She's quiet, but she's also very aware. When she's kidnapped, she's much more advanced than these other two girls are. There are things that she knows. She has a much different type of skill sets, and you don't really know what's going on with her, but once they peel back the layers, it really starts to make sense of who 
she really is. And I think her character, honestly, was just as interesting as Kevin in this movie. She, her character, I really did love the direction they went with her character. She was fantastic in this film. She really does have a bright future ahead of her. I like that she did a completely different role in this movie. I'm very happy to see that she's getting her name out there because she's a very talented actress. And I can't wait to see what else she's doing because she definitely is on a hot streak so far. Now, someone who I really didn't know was going to play as big as a role as she did in this movie, and it's mainly because they didn't show her a ton um, in the trailers, is Betty Buckley as Karen, uh, basically Kevin's therapist, who is basically supposed to be the other side of this film. You know, this is someone who really knows what Kevin is going through, but she definitely has doubts about him. You know, she doesn't know if he's crazy or if he's not, and the way that they would go with her story I thought was very interesting. I thought she did a very good job here, and she also was fantastic, as well was the rest of the cast. Everyone really did a great job here. I think everyone really did give it their all, and uh, definitely this is one of the best casts that M. Night Shyamalan has had in a long time. But as good as the acting is, and as good as James McAvoy is in the role, because like I said, the entire movie is kind of, uh, the, you know, it's, it's, it's really, he's the deciding factor if this is movie's good or not. Uh, the directing really is what matters here, because holy shit is M. Night Shyamalan back. I mean, his directing here is honestly perfection. I really think his directing was pretty spot on with this movie. His tones are completely jumbled throughout the film, but it's not really done in a jarring way, and that's something that I thought was very interesting with this movie. Is that this is one of those movies where constantly the tone will change, but honestly, it does make sense, because, you know, we see Kevin in the film, he'll start as one character, say, Hedwig, this innocent, perverted, nine-year-old kid who's really funny, has kind of a foul mouth on him, and is definitely one of the more humorous parts of the film, but then something suspenseful will happen, and suddenly Hedwig will turn into, oh, possibly... Uh, Patricia, who is this very sadistic, uh, lady who we don't really know who she is, and the way that he did that just seemed so, he did it so seemingly, and he did it in a way that was very natural, and it really was not jarring at all. It's not the kind of tone that switch that throws you off, or makes you feel like this isn't working. Most times, it worked really, really well, and I thought he did a really good job with conveying that, because it makes the film feel more spontaneous and more realistic, and that definitely is a definition of film. I mean, this definitely is a very spontaneous film, but that's also because what we're dealing with here is a very spontaneous man who seemingly will just change personalities within the drop of the hat. I mean, there's nothing really that can triggers it. It just kind of happens. And the way that that was done, I thought the directing was fantastic in that regard. I love the way that that was done. I thought that the movie was very funny at times. It was very suspenseful. It was very sad. Uh, sometimes it was scary. I mean, it really has a little bit of everything. And they really did an incredible job with keeping the tone, um, not consistent, you know, it was very inconsistent in terms of tones, and for this movie, it works incredibly well, and I really did love the way that it was done, and the screenplay, I think, is just as noteworthy to really, um, to really commend here, because he really did an incredible job with this story. The story in general is so well crafted, and I thought it was so interesting, and just getting into the mind of Kevin, you know, what he went through, how he went through all this, I thought was definitely really interesting, and you might think that the movie doesn't really give us time to get to know Kevin, but it actually does. Like, you really do start to realize, you know, this is why Kevin went through this, and this is why he created these personalities, but what's great about that character is if you don't like Kevin, then that's fine, because he's not even really necessarily a character. He is a character, but he, you know, he's the vessel, you know, he's the one that inhabits all of these 23 personalities, and every single one of these personalities are just so different, and none of them really think alike, and when you start to realize why these personalities are coming out, and why all this is starting to happen to Kevin, the movie gets really, really interesting, and it gets more and more intense as it goes on, and I really did love uh, the way the movie told that story. I thought it was a very interesting story overall, you know, how Kevin has done all this, how he has all these personalities, uh, who, how these personalities work. I just found all that to be so fascinating, and I really did get in the story, I have to say. The thrills as well, it, this is a constantly suspenseful film. I was on the edge of my seat basically throughout the entire movie, 
even if something funny was happening, it's one of those moments where it's like, okay, this is funny, but you know something's gonna happen. And he did a really good job with throwing you off, but again, in a good way, where uh, you'll see that, you know, he really does, you know, you, he'll take a scene, you'll think it's gonna be funny, but immediately it turns into something dramatic, and I think he did a really good job uh, with it overall in terms of the screenplay. Definitely thought that was definitely very well done. And the way they peel back the layers of most of the characters in this movie, I think was definitely well done. Notice how I said most of the characters, because there is one very big fatal flaw that this film has, and it's not a huge flaw, but it definitely is something I think would have benefited the film more, and that is basically that besides Anya Taylor-Joy, Betty Buckley, and James McAvoy, the rest of the characters in this movie are completely fine, but they're kind of just disposable characters that are kind of just meant to be there to be put at harm, and uh, Haley, as good as Haley Richardson and, um, Jessica, uh, J Jessica Sula are, as good as they are, they don't really have a ton to do in this movie. We don't really explore their characters, we don't really get to know who they are. They try to develop them, definitely. Like, you get the sense that they're not as intelligent as Anya Taylor-Joy is, and they don't have the skill set that she does, and they're a little bit more... Uh, scared than she is, because Anya Taylor-Joy doesn't, nothing really seems to phase her in this moment, you know, they seem to be a little bit more, you know, they're definitely freaking out and kind of, you know, reacting naturally, but other than that, they don't really do a ton with them, and I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more about them, you know, what they really were going through, uh, why they're really in this situation. I think their performances were fine, but I really think you could honestly replace them with any actress, and they would have done just as fine as a job as these two really did, because they just didn't really have a ton to do in this movie. And I didn't really feel like we got to know them that well. A lot of this movie, Haley Richardson very early on gets locked away. Uh, Jessica Sula uh, follows um, pretty much not too much after, you know, and, and basically the rest of the movie, they're kind of just chained up and we don't really know uh, why or what's going on. We eventually find out why, obviously, but we just didn't really get to know these characters, and I feel like the movie would have benefited more if they did take the time to develop these characters, because I liked them as actors, I just kind of wanted to get to know them more, and the movie really didn't spend a lot of time doing that, I have to say. But... Something I will say that he did incredibly well is treating the audience like they're smart, which is something I feel he has had a bit of a problem with lately, because movies like After Earth and The Happening and The Last Airbender, I've only seen one of those three. I haven't seen The Happening, and I certainly haven't seen After Earth. I'll probably never watch those movies. The problem he had was too much exposition and too much stuff to develop, and this is definitely closer to his wheelhouse, because he doesn't tell you what's going on. This is a movie where he wants you to, you know, to think, and he constantly keeps us guessing. There's a lot of things that'll happen in the beginning of the film, and it's not gonna make a ton of sense. You're gonna be like, well, what the fuck is happening here? But this is one of those movies where stay with him towards the end, and it will make sense. And I thought he did a really good job with doing that. Not many directors know how to do that a lot. You know, everyone think, thinks we have to force feed everything. Why? Because, again, people want things, you know, they want answers instantaneously, and that's not something you're going to get in this movie. You're gonna have to wait, and you're gonna have to have patience. If you don't have patience, you're not gonna like this movie. I'm gonna tell you that right now. If you're someone who doesn't want to sit and really think about a movie and you don't have patience, then you're not gonna like this movie because this is a movie that constantly uh, wants you to keep guessing and it tells you things that doesn't make a ton of sense, but then when you stick with it, then it eventually does make sense and I thought they did that very, very well here. The cinematography here was also incredible. I thought they did a really good job with saying it in this location. It's so many things. It's a hostage thriller. It's you know, this psychological drama, and they did a really good job with telling, with, you know, with using the cinematography to tell that story very well. I really did love the way that was done. Some shots absolutely blow my mind. There's one shot throughout the end of the film, and it's incredible the way, it's this one tracking shot that I thought was so well done. I love the way that tracking shot was handled, as well as the score here. The score is pretty suspenseful. It's really creepy and eerie, and they did a really good job with the um, score, and then the editing in this movie. This movie is almost two hours long, and I heard a lot of people say, oh, it's very slow, and it's very sluggish, but for me, I never found it slow. I was into it almost the entire time. I will admit, it took a little bit for the movie to get going. Maybe that's just because I saw in the trailers, but once we get to the actual story of what's actually going on, I was locked in basically throughout the rest of the movie, and god damn it, the ending. I can't wait to talk about the ending for you guys, so I'm gonna stop talking now and just get right into spoilers because I really do want to talk about uh, what happened at the end of this movie. 
And this is one of those movies where I really can't talk about it without talking spoilers. As much as I want to keep talking about the editing, I just, I have to talk about the spoilers for you guys. Because the way that this movie ends is one of the most genius things that M. Night Shyamalan has done. And I really have no idea how he was able to lock it away uh, as well as he did. Especially by having in so many film festivals and showing it to so many audiences. How no one, you know, even at the slip of a, you know, just by slipping of the word, you know, saying that... What this really was and if you guys are still here uh please go away because i'm going to spoil a huge spoiler and of course that is because as we know the end of this movie we find out is actually a sequel to unbreakable and it is incredible the way that he was able to do that honestly the second that we heard them talking about what was going on i'm like okay i know what's about to happen but i'm not sure what especially when they showed the title the second time my audience almost left the theater when that happened because it seemed like the movie was over but it wasn't we see the title and i'm like okay what are you really trying to do here but then they cut and then i saw bruce willis and i freaked out because you guys know how much i love unbreakable i think it is one of m night's greatest achievements and it really does make sense when you factor in the beast of it all the beast is a very similar character to that of mr glass in unbreakable where they both feel that they are these powerful superheroes who you know they can't they, they can't be they're unbreakable basically you know they're they're completely unbreakable and they're just there to basically you know to cause havoc and destruction on the town and they need all these sacrifices and it really does make sense when you factor into that character i love the way that they handled that twist i thought it was it made so much sense the way that was done and the way it ends you can definitely tell that m night Shyamalan is probably setting up an unbreakable too i could definitely see a scenario with that happening where he has you know kevin as the villain of that movie i think it would make perfect sense if he did that and realizing that this is actually an origin story for a villain was just genius i mean i had no idea that that's where we were going with this and i absolutely love that i love the way that he was able to keep that locked away and there are definitely hints of that throughout the movie i honestly it's one of those movies where I, if i had the opportunity to go back and watch the movie I would right now because it just there's so many things that they hint at and it makes sense too because Betty Buckley as well said that they're oh he's not a superhero there's no way this could possibly be true just like David was kind of in denial throughout the end of Unbreakable and I thought they did that in a very good way uh, with this film. I thought that was definitely very well crafted. But the other thing I really want to talk about is Casey's arc. Because that whole thing I thought was very brilliantly done. The way that they gave us Casey's character. And like I said, the second you see her, you know that she's very reclusive. And you know there's something off about her. Then when we start to see that she has scars on her. And that she clearly self-harms herself. And that she probably has been abused by her uncle. It really did start to make sense that this is probably... As bad as this is, it's probably not the worst emotional trauma she's been through. She's probably been through a lot worse. I mean, we all saw the scene where her uncle told her to take her clothes off. And I like that they didn't tell you what happened because we can kind of just, inf you know, infer what happened. We, we know what happened. You know, they don't, the movie does not need to spell it out for us. We, when, you know, when an adult tells a little girl to take her clothes off, we know what's going to happen. I mean, the, the movie doesn't really have to spell it out for us. And I know some people might be in denial, but, you know, th we know what happened, honestly. He, he raised her if you guys can't tell he probably raped her and it definitely makes sense with Casey's arc throughout the film and the way the movie told that story I thought was very well done and I hope we see her character again but if we don't I thought it was just as satisfying as the way the movie ended with them saying oh you're gonna go back to your uncle with her having a look on her face of being like yeah fuck no I'm not going back to him I, I think that Casey is gonna find a way to break free from him I think she's gonna go out on her own I think in some way she is going to collide with Kevin again I think definitely something is gonna take place in that type of you know between those two definitely something's gonna happen there and the way that she kind of identified uh with kevin but specifically hedwig i thought was really well done because you get the sense of casey she's just as off as kevin she's just as different as kevin no one seems to understand her in the way that you know the, the two other girls are understood like i said they're just kind of expendable characters that were just there to be sacrifices to the beast and you could tell in general that they were kind of irrelevant i mean he just said that he did tell them that they were kind of useless and that there wasn't anything he could do about them. I got the sense that they were kind of defenseless and 
they couldn't do anything, but we did have that scene where she was pecking at, you know, where uh, the one character was trying to open the door, she was, like, pecking at it. We never know if she broke free or not. I'm guessing the beast got her, but we don't really know, so that kind of did throw me off as well. Other than that, guys, I absolutely love this movie. I am so happy that the movie went in the direction it did. I think it's one of the most genius things M. Night Shyamalan has did. It's one of those things that very well kept us guessing, and definitely there were things throughout the movie that I thought didn't really make a ton of sense. Like, the direction they went with the beast I didn't really know how to feel about that, but once we got to the end of the movie, that really made a ton of sense to me, and I have to say, from there, I really was, it made the movie that much more memorable and that much better for me than it already was. So over, guys, Split is definitely the comeback film for M. Night Shyamalan. He really knocked it out of the park in terms of acting and the writing. Just everything about this movie feels like M. Night Shyamalan. It feels like this is the kind of movie he needs to be making. He needs to steer away from Last Airbender and things like that and movies about plants attacking Earth and things like that and more psychological thrillers like this. This is the kind of stuff he's great at. And if you are not on board with M. Night Shyamalan and you're a fan of his early stuff, this will get you on board. I am telling you there is no possible way that if you're a fan of M. Night Shyamalan that you won't be on somewhat on board with this movie, especially with the way it ends. There's no way that you won't be on board. This is by far the best movie I've seen this year, obviously. It's the first great movie of 2017, and I think it's a really genius movie that he put it in a month like January, where we have so many terrible movies. I think he kind of put it here because there aren't many good movies, and he kind of put a good movie here here because he's trying to surprise people. People are going to think, oh, this is a January movie. It's not going to be good. They're going to see it and they're going to be like, holy shit, that was great. And that was the exact reaction I got after watching this movie. Split is an incredible film that I can't wait to see again. And I'm definitely going to give Split a 4.5 out of 5 or an A-. minus. So overall, guys, my review split. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie overall. Love to your thoughts on basically everything, including the twist ending and the details in the film. James McAvoy's performance. Uh, definitely love to your thoughts about all that stuff. Do you think his character is going to return? Where are they going with then the movie? I'd love to your thoughts on that. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be, I think, for the young pope. Don't quote me on that, but I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.